Invasion of the Vorticons trilogy concluded, you think the Commander Keen franchise would be over with, right? Well, not quite. The next series on the menu is a Goodbye Galaxy series. This time there are two games, and today I'll be reviewing the first game, Secret of the Oracle. Considering that the first three games were successful, it wouldn't come as a surprise if there were more games on the way. So, how does this game stack up? The story is that Commander Keen gets a strange distress signal from his clubhouse. He finds a seer and tells Keen what's happened. It turns out the oracles are missing and it's up to Commander Keen to find them. So now Commander Keen transforms himself from martyr to hero? Keen must have had a change of heart following his victory over the Vorticons. The biggest change to take note is that there's a difficulty selection. What this means is that depending on which difficulty you select, you'll be facing either more enemies with less shots or vice versa. As expected, the graphics are a step up. The level designs are also trickier this time and there's more attention to detail like the hills and crevices in each level. The enemies are also more interesting this time around as there is more variety. The most common will be the snails that decide to pee either out of fear or excitement and red bouncy balls that bounce all over the place. Commander King can enter buildings to explore more of the level as well. The animations are smoother and the characters are livelier. The gameplay remains the same with some tweaks and improvements. Commander Key must have gone through some serious training. He can now shoot in multiple directions, including while in the air and on a pole. As for not quite making the jump, King can now hang on to ledges and pull himself up. Must have been some really intense training to get this good. You think with all that training, Commander Keen would be tougher? Nope, he still dies in one hit. If you plan on getting extra lives by purposely dying on a level where it's easy to get points, you're out of luck. Instead of every 20,000 points to an extra life, it's now double point values like 20,000, 40,000, 80,000, etc. Also a new feature is the ability to collect raindrops. Much like the coins in Super Mario Bros., you get an extra life if you collect 100 of them or pick up a vial of water. This is also the only game that introduces swimming. It's a real shame because Episodes 1 and 3 had water, and it would have been nice to see Keen swim. Speaking of swimming, this game also introduces us to one of the more bizarre characters, the dope fish. Hey, no biting! For some odd reason, the joystick isn't very useful in this game. It's easier to slip off the poles with the controller, so I'd recommend using the keyboard because you can use the space button to fire instead of pressing the control and alt keys at the same time. I find it rather unusual that a game would go from great with a joystick to horrible with a joystick. The soundtrack for this game is well done, despite having only six songs. Overall, Episode 4 is obviously a step up from the previous entries. With new mechanics and improved gameplay, Keen is ready for anything. Episode 4 gets 4 stars out of 5. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out these two beauties right here. If you want to subscribe to my videos, click this button here. And if you want to see more of my videos, click this button over here.